Good morning friends, what a heck of a ride on this CBR 600 F3 and uh, what a beautiful place to shoot it. So this is my new beautiful machine which is the Honda CBR 600 F3. It is uh, somewhere around 105 horses and 67 Nm of torque. What a beautiful machine this is. It goes mad about 6000 RPM and it even still did red line. I am absolutely happy to have this with me. It's like my first inline 4 machine and it is very special to me. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing good and uh, today I am going to share why I bought uh, the vintage super bike compared to the latest ones right now here in India. But before I start with my video, I would like to share a few info on the latest launch. So first I'll talk about the Bullet 350 which has been launched at a price of 1.21 lakhs X showroom. It's a BS6 variant and uh, unfortunately the Bullet 500 has been discontinued now. But the paint scheme to the 350 is now been borrowed by the 500. So the next uh, bike on the list is the Domino 400 BS6 variant which has been launched at the price of 1.91 lakhs X showroom and it is 2000 more than the previous version which was the BS4. And, uh, in terms of the power figures, Domino retains the 40 PS and 35 Newton meters of torque. But if I compare it with uh, the weight, uh, Domino has gained uh, 3 kgs of weight uh, compared to its previous version. And uh, next I'll talk about uh, the legendary Honda Unicorn 150 which has been into the service for 16 years and Honda has finally decided to discontinue it and uh, launch some new products. So uh, this, is, this was all about the latest launch which I wanted to share with you all. So let's begin with the video. Let's start. The legendary Honda 600 F series carries a history of over 30 years. So allow me to quickly run you with the evolution of this middleweight motorcycle. It all started in 1987 when Honda launched the Honda CBR 600 F which was also known as the Hurricane. In 1990 Honda launched the CBR 600 F2. This bike was more sharper and beautiful, however the power figures did not change but the torque was now gone up by 4 Nm to improve the power band all over the rev range. In the year 1995, Honda came up with another update with the launch of the CBR 600 F3. This time Honda was more focused on the performance rather than just the aesthetics. So at 100 HP it got a whopping 15 bhp power bump compared to the CBR F2. In 1998, Honda replaced the F3 with the CBR F4. This time, Honda did made few changes to the design and also the power was up by 100 HP to 105 HP. Carburetors and fuel pumps which were earlier controlled by the CDI units were now a history. Fuel injections and issues had replaced the carburetors and it was used mainly with all the two-wheeler companies and it still continues to remain the same. In the year 2001, Honda launched its first fuel-injected bike, the CBR 600 F4i. This was a new era of motorcycles. At 109 HP, the CBR 600 F4i is the most powerful middleweight motorcycle produced by Honda under the F nomenclature. So from 2006 till 2011, Honda had stopped the production of the 600 F series. However, due to the increasing demand of this middleweight sports storer, Honda decided to launch the CBR 600F back again with a completely fresh design and Honda's new programmed fuel injection technology also known as the PGMFI but the power figures were dropped by 8 bhp comparing it with its predecessor the CBR 600F4i. 
so by 2014 uh, the 600cc engines were outdated due to the emission norms so all the two wheeler companies were focusing on building up a 650cc middleweight sports storer with a lesser emission level and more refinement in 2014, Honda launched the CBR650F. Sadly, it was the last iteration of the legendary middleweight 600F series. This was also the Honda's first middleweight 650cc motorcycle to launch in India. So it had an improved styling with the revised headlight and the bodywork. The emission level has also taken care of. The refinement level had gone up, but despite of being a fuel-injected bike, it was still heavier than all its carburetor versions which were produced in the 90s and the power figures were dropped down drastically by 17 bhp. In 2019, the legendary F-Series came to an end with the launch of the new CBR650R which was updated version of the 650F. So yes, finally Honda decided to drop down its F pedigree and replace it with a more sportier R tag. The Indian spec 650R produces 88 bhp and 62 newton meters of torque which is still less by 12 bhp and 2 newton meters of torque comparing with my 25 year old vintage CBR 600 F3. Which also brings me back to answer the question that why I chose to buy a vintage superbike over the latest ones. Let's find out. Enter the legendary 1995 Honda CBR 600 F3. Though it looks pretty heavy with the flesh, but it is freaking 26 kgs lighter than the most affordable inline 4 600cc bike, the Benelli 600i. If I have to stack it against the last generation middleweight F series, it is still 10 kgs lighter than the CBR 650F and also produces more 15 bhp and 4 newton meters of torque. So well that also brings me to few more USPs of this bike, one of them being the direct air induction technology that Honda used in this bike to improve the mid-range and the top-end power of this bike. So it gets fully adjustable preload compression and rebound damping both at front and at the rear which only the higher segment motorcycles which are about 10 lakhs have those equipments with them. Take it out on a track in the cities, on the highways and the canyons and it will do its job with a smile on your face. So talking about the performance, it is an all-rounder. I haven't tested it on a track, but with the correct suspension tuning and a good set of sticky rubber, I'm sure that it would disappoint me on the track either. I absolutely love the way it delivers its power and it pulls up sweetly from the idle higher up to the 14,000 RPM redline and there isn't any flat spot or the power drop whatsoever. And the addictive inline four symphony begs you to keep the throttle wide open until you reach the red line. Being an old school bike, it has its own advantage, which differentiates this bike from the other sports bike that we see here in India. And since it is a sports torer, the riding posture is not very aggressive and it is also comfortable for the pillion for touring. One more advantage is its low maintenance compared to the 600cc bikes that we see now. This is mainly because it uses the carburetors as the fueling system. So the working mechanism is similar to the single cylinder engines that we see in India. So it really becomes easy to service and repair this bike at almost any two wheeler garage provided the mechanic has a good amount of experience. So it does lack few equipments like uh, the slipper clutch and the dual channel ABS compared to the modern uh, 600cc we have it here in India uh, and also the traction control but uh, given the price I've bought it for it, I cannot complain and I ask for anything much because I've bought it for three times lesser than the most affordable inline 4 cylinder bike the Benelli 600i and uh, it really does everything what a 600cc sport store should do and I do not have any complaints whatsoever so I am really proud and very happy to own uh, such a legendary bike like this so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and in case if you enjoyed this video please like my channel subscribe to my channel hit the like button and stay tuned for more videos and do follow me on Instagram and Facebook to stay updated. Bye-bye.